to Throwback Thursday. I'm getting a little bit of a late start today. It's a rainy day and moving slow, and I've just been slammed in the studio. So I got this started yesterday, but didn't get it finished. Um, today, we are working with Graphic 45 Botanical Tea. This is one of my all-time favorite Graphic 45 collections, and I worked with the leftovers of the original release. It has since been re-released as a deluxe collector edition, but this is the original. And I just have little cut up pieces and little bits of this and that left. So I designed a double gatefold card to share with you and I'll show you how to do the base and share some tips with you. Also, I have a little tip on paper storage today. So kind of a hodgepodge. Um, but a good, I think it's going to be a good post. I think you're going to like it. Anyway, this is a six by six double gatefold card. And the cover is a shaker made with Tim Holtz lace frames. The way I do this is I use Distress Oxide ink. This was bundled sage. And I just tap that all over the frame. Then I spritz it very lightly with water to make the oxide react and it creates this beautiful vintage patina on the frame. Then I can come back in with Gathered Twigs Distress Ink and just very lightly add a shadow around the edges, outside and inside. And then of course, you adhere clear acrylic card stock or acetate, whatever you want to call it, on the back side, foam tape, and then your image, which is one of the four by six from the originals that I aged with tea dye. And that creates this beautiful shaker box. I just, I just love shaker cards, guys. They're like a toy. Um, so fill this with um, buttons galore and more. I can't remember what this is called, but I'll link it in the post. And this is a uh, Rene Bouquet glass wing dragonfly. It's just gorgeous. And it was perfect for this because I don't know if you can see it, but there's a dragonfly in the background paper. So I just layered this over so that the dragonfly in the background looks like a shadow, which is super fun. Little birdie Layla um, roses, and I think these are pearl pink. And then really reasonable ribbon um, satin with a grow grain edge. I'm not sure the name of this color, but I also I will link an iridescent metallic string, some vintage buttons from my stash, and then these are part of the original release, which had the little banners and tags. So that's the front, and the fun thing about this style card, I'm holding all the layers together with this little bulldog clip that I dressed up with a little piece of chipboard, a little tiny flower, and an itty bitty key, and we'll take that off, and then it opens out like this which how fun is that? So this flips over and on the inside panels, I just used up all my little bits and bobs. This is one of the um, original tag and pocket that I didn't have a tag anymore. So what I did was I dressed up a little miniature lint chocolate with scraps of paper and that lives in the pocket. Then this is one of the little uh, banners and tags that I just punched out to add little elements here. A little strip of sticker that I had left. And then in the center, I had previously die cut some Tim Holtz teacups out of this patterned paper for a different project. And I found those left over, which was, that was a boon. And I just um, glued the bottom ones together, decorated with a little bird stamp, and then tucked one of the 8x8 eight little journal cards in there. And that lives in this pocket, which is made from one of the stamp strips. And I just glued three sides. So that goes in there. And then in the big pocket on the back, this is the same image that is on the front. I cut it down. And on the back, there's room to write a message. So that lives in that pocket. Then over here, I had some of the little banners left over and I just matted those on pink of the six by six uh, patterns and solids that I had left and layered those up here with a little sticker at the bottom. This is Rene Bouquet's lace and this made, this made the front design work. It was a little overwhelming with all the green, even though I love this pattern, this white, it just worked. It made everything come together. I don't know why. But the cool thing about this style card is that you also have, whoops, 
the entire back side that you can cover. So I did. And um, you can just see little stamps. I created another pocket on the back for another little journal card. I made a sweet little tea wallet just with um, scraps that I had left and a honey stick goes in there. And that's a sticker. But these are so pretty when they're opened up. And you could add small photos here because these are three inches wide. So you could put little tiny photos here to finish that out. And then of course it just closes up. So, let me move this out of the way and I'll show you how to make this base. Online, if you look online, there's a place called envelopes.com where you can get 12 by 18 inch long paper. And if you don't have that, you can join together um, six inch paper, it's just a little harder to score. So you wanna overlap, um, just cut it two six inch panels, six inch by 12 inch panels and join them together. You've seen me do that before. But join in the middle so you're not trying to score over that union line. That's a little difficult. So the formula for a double gatefold is this. Figure out the width that you want your center panel and front cover to be. For this card, I wanted six. That's why I went six by 18. If I had wanted it to be five by seven, I would have gone 15 by seven because then you have three five inch panels. If I'd wanted four and a quarter, I would have gone, let me do the math really quick. I think that comes out to 13. So whatever you want your center panel to be, triple that width. Then lay your paper on your scoring tool and you're going to score six and six. That gives you your three panels. Then you're going to score in between. So in between six and 12 is nine. In between one and six is three. And now you've got your scored panels and you just very simply fold those into the center and then burnish them down. So each of these little folded panels is half the width of the center panel. So not very hard math, a little bit of math, but not too hard. And then you just fold it and look how easy that is. And it's such a dramatic card to open. And I love this style of card for finishing up scraps because you can just use small panels for the most part. You've got one big panel here, one big panel here. Um, and then to do the gate fold on the top, I just glued my frame partially. See how it's open up? This is the back side of that frame. So you don't want to glue it to both sides because otherwise you can't pull it open. So just do about halfway. This On this one, I went about three-fourths of the way over on this panel. I hope that makes sense. It's really not hard to do, and they're a very fun card to make and a great way to use up scraps. So very quickly, now that you've seen how to put that together, I want to show you how I store my scraps. This is a plastic file from I think it's scrapbook storage. You can get them at scrapbook.com. If you just go to scrapbook.com and you put in paper file, it'll come up. And if you look over on the sidebar of my blog, you'll see a link to scrapbook.com. So this is what I do when I get down to the dregs of a collection. I like to use old envelopes. And these are six by six. And I can put six by six panels in you know six inch wide panels in here it just helps keep it organized and then my smaller panels as well so patterned paper is all in here then if i have leftover images i put those in another little envelope and that way they don't get lost and i don't feel overwhelmed when i start going through and i can make little piles to work from i do really well when i have piles of like items that I can kind of set out and pick and choose like a paper buffet. And then of course, here's my little six by six. I tuck little scraps of that back inside here. Same with the eight by eight. You can see like larger scraps, although that should really be in the envelope, but 
I was cleaning up and it got messed up. So border pieces, I cut those all out and hooked them together with a paper clip. And then they live in that file too. And then my chipboard pieces. I used to take these out and put them in envelopes, but it made it really bulky for storage. I found I do better if I leave them flat, stored in their original um, packaging. So big pieces just live outside, free range. And I keep the little flowers and tags and pockets. Here's the sticker sheet. Again, with these, I do better if I leave them on there. And then I have a few more pieces. These are short border pieces uh, that I keep separate from the long border pieces. And then here were my, but you can see I didn't have any, this is the only full piece I had and I didn't cut into it. So if you struggle with ways to store scraps, I really, really love these file folders. And they're not that expensive. I think you pay, I think you get, I want to say you get five of them for about $13. Um, which I think is pretty reasonable because it helps keep me organized and that's a really big deal. So that is Throwback Thursday for this week. I hope I shared some ideas that you can use. I hope you have fun with this double gatefold design. It's a really great card to use up scraps. And that's all for me. I'm gonna go get my craft done. Thanks for stopping by.